Porter, as we continue part two of our conversation with David Talbot on his new book, The Devil's Chessboard, Alan Dulles, the CIA, and the Rise of America's Secret Government, I asked him why he was why Alan Dulles was fired by JFK. Well, he was hired after the Bay of Pigs. Uh, Kennedy realized he shouldn't have kept Dulles on from the Eisenhower years. They were philosophically too different. Um, and the Bay of Pigs was the final straw for him. Uh, so he was pushed out after that. And uh, but Dulles, as I say, continued to sort of set up an anti-Kennedy government in exile in his home in Georgetown. Many of the people he was meeting with, uh, several of the people, including Howard Hunt and others, later became figures of suspicion during the House Select Committee on Assassination he hearings um, in Washington in the 1970s. You know, most Americans don't know that that was the last official statement, the last official report on the Kennedy assassination, not the Warren report back in 1964, but the Congress reopened the investigation into John Kennedy's assassination, and they did determine he was killed as a result of a conspiracy. So a number of the people who came up during this investigation by Congress were figures of interest who were meeting with Alan Dulles. They had no, uh, uh, you know, obvious reason to be meeting with a retired CIA official. The weekend of Kennedy's assassination, uh, Alan Dulles is not at home watching television like the rest of uh, America. He's at a remote CIA facility, two years after being pushed out of the agency by Kennedy, called The Farm in Northern Virginia, that he used when he was director of the CIA as a kind of an alternate command post. Well, he's there while Kennedy's killed, after Kennedy's killed, when Jack Ruby then kills Lee Harvey Oswald. That whole fateful weekend, he's hunkered down at a CIA command post. So there are many uh, odd circumstances like this. Uh, uh, I also found out from interviewing the, the children of another uh, former CIA official that uh, one of the key figures of interest in the Kennedy assassination, a guy named William Harvey, who was head of the CIA mafia plot against Castro and uh, hated the Kennedys, thought that they were weak and so on, he was seen. Uh, leaving his Rome station and flying to Dallas by his own deputy on an airplane hmm. early in November 1963. This is a remarkable sighting, because to place someone like William Harvey, the head of the CIA's assassination unit, put there by Alan Dulles, in Dallas in November 63, before the assassination, is a very important fact. Um, the CIA, by the way, refuses, even at this late date, to release the travel vouchers for people like William Harvey. Um, under the JFK Records Act that was passed back in the 1990s, they are compelled by federal law to release all documents related to the Kennedy assassination. But they're still hold, withholding over 1,100 of these documents, including, and I I used the uh, Freedom of Information Act to try and get the travel vouchers for William Harvey. They're still holding on to them. Um, how many calls are you getting in the mainstream media to do interviews? Well, thank God I was saying earlier for alternative media like this, uh, Amy, because there is resistance to this book. But first of all, I call out the mainstream media. I say that New York Times, CBS, uh, Washington Post, Newsweek, they were all under his thumb. Uh, they Who's did his thumb? bidding, Alan Dulles's thumb. So when uh, the Warren Report came out, I was saying that uh, the, one of the editors, top editors at Newsweek, wrote to him and say, thank you so much, Mr. Dulles, for helping shape our coverage of the Warren Report. Well, of course, Alan Dulles was on the Warren Commission. He, in fact, some people thought it should have been called the Dulles Commission because he dominated it so much. So, um, you know, it's way too cozy, the relationship between Washington power and the media. And What was the relationship between Arthur Hayes Sulzberger, the publisher of The New York Times, and Alan Dulles, the head of the CIA? Well, court? they were social friends, not just him, but other members of the Sulzberger family. Uh, I found, you know, cozy correspondence between them, uh, congratulating him when he was inaugurated, Dulles as CIA director. Um, they called him Allie, one of the Salzberger families, in one letter. Um, they would get together, you know, every year. Uh, Dulles would hold these media sort of uh, drink fests uh, for New Year's. And uh, these were, you know, top reporters, top editors would get together with the CIA guys and rub elbows and get a little drunk. Um, and 
you know, when Alan Dulles didn't want a reporter uh, because he felt he was being overly aggressive, covering, say, Guatemala, Sidney Grusin, the reporter, in the run-up to the coup there in 1954, he had he made a call to The New York Times and had him removed. That was because of his relationship with the, uh, Salzburg or the publisher. So that was the kind of pull that Alan Wait, Dulles had. How did had. that work? Well, they just took him out. They they removed Grusin. They 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 uh, transferred him, uh, I think, to Mexico at that point. David Talbot on his new book, The Devil's Chessboard: Alan Dulles, the CIA, and the Rise of America's Secret Government. To seat parts one and three, you can go to democracynow.org.